How to build a Blackgate Sweep P5 inch gauge locomotive, part 41. Bolting the cylinders to the frames and making sure that the crosshead guide bars are in perfect alignment. This is extremely important when building a miniature steam locomotive. Up to now the cylinders have been loosely bolted in position just so I could work with them and fit the support brackets that hold the shaft which operates the cylinder drains. Now I'm about to bolt the cylinders to the frames using Allen cap head bolts. Thankfully the tolerance of the holes in the frames does allow some movement. I need to make sure that the centre of the piston rod lines up with the centre of the axle of the main driving wheels. And also the crosshead guides have to be in line with the motion bracket too. To be honest I was quite worried about this because this locomotive is not particularly brilliantly made but as you can see here there's sufficient movement to allow alignment of the crosshead guide with the motion bracket. The next job is to mount the cylinders permanently in place. I bought a collection of M6 Allen cap head bolts. Generally speaking I don't use Allen cap head bolts on miniature steam locomotives but these M6 ones are fine because they are inside the frames. I wasn't sure of the length that I needed so I bought a selection of different lengths and thankfully one of the collection of Allen cap head bolts was precisely the right length for the job. The cylinders need to be bolted very tightly to the frames, any movement in this area would not be good. I don't think the cylinders will move when I bolt them to the frames because they're held in place by six of these Allen cap head bolts. I'm sure some viewers will be thinking why haven't I painted the mounting brackets for the cross shaft for the cylinder drains. There is a valid reason for this. Had I have painted these brackets then that's okay, they would have fitted perfectly and looked better than they do now. But for whatever reason, if I was to remove the cylinders, at a future time the paint layers would be stuck together and that would damage the paint on the frames and on the brackets. I will of course be painting these mounting brackets, first of all using etching primer followed by satin black paint. But I don't think I'll spray them, I'm going to paint them using a paintbrush. To my great relief, once I bolted the cylinders in position, the alignment of the crosshead guide bars to the motion bracket was fine. But at the point of contact, the motion bracket was a little bit too deep. Here I'm removing the fitting and I'm filing the gunmetal casting using quite a coarse file, being very careful not to remove too much metal. Gunmetal is very soft and very easy to file. It's similar in a lot of ways to filing brass, but the gunmetal is somehow more slippery and therefore it's great for bearing materials. You can see here by the filings on the frames that I haven't removed very much metal at all. Here I'm blowing away the filings with an airline. When I refit the mounting block it's perfectly aligned with the motion bracket. And this can be seen in the close-up that's on screen at the moment. Perfect alignment. This however is not always the case. Sometimes on crosshead guides you do have to correct slight misalignment using gaskets or even thin shim steel. On this engine the mounting of the crosshead guides at the cylinder end is slightly less than perfect so I may have to use a gasket on this. Although it's very slight and I'm sure it would wear in after a few runs. The clearance between the motion bracket and the guide bar in this case is intentional to allow for a bit of side play should it be required. What I'm doing here is repeating the process on the other cylinder. First of all I remove the two temporary bolts and replace them with Allen cap heads. For this job it's far easier to use an Allen key than put a large spanner in and have to keep repositioning it as you tighten. In this clip I'm fitting the centre bolt of the other cylinder. With all of the Allen cap head bolts in position I really do not think that the cylinders are going to come loose. I was a bit concerned in case the brackets weren't in alignment but I refitted the piece of 3 16 bar and everything was fine. These cylinder covers were made using a file and there's nothing wrong with that if you can use a file. Here using a piece of mahogany to protect the main casting, I'm filing the top part of the gland. 
I shouldn't have to do this, but I can't really argue with it. If it's not right, it needs to be put right. These cylinder covers are quite rudimentary components, and I would have used a milling machine, but maybe the original builder didn't have one. The edges of the cylinder cover are already damaged. Here, I'm just taking a little bit more off, but I'm being very careful not to let the file contact the bolting face. After the filing, it looks a lot better. The crosshead guide bar sits perfectly level. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video in the title, this is a very important process. And now, when I tighten the securing bolt, which holds the guide bar to the cylinder cover, the crosshead on the crosshead guide moves perfectly at each end. For once, to check the alignment, I'm not going to use my calibrated eye. My eye tells me that it's aligned, so I'm going to check. This is a level box, a really clever gadget, and a very good asset to any workshop. This little gadget has a magnetic base, and you have to be very careful that you don't sit it on any metal particles. Here it is, sat on the cylinder, giving a reading of 4.51 degrees. All I need to do now is lift up the box and wipe the underside to make sure there aren't any more metal particles stuck to it. And then sit the box on the guide bar. And guess what? It's 4.51 degrees on the guide bar. Both of the cylinders and the crosshead guides perfectly align with the motion bracket. You should really buy one of these level boxes, they are very useful, as well as being inexpensive. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.